team will leave as world champion. We're going for the number one title, and we're not going to stop. It's right here, right now. They have waited a year for this moment. Use that extra ability to jump out. Staying so accurate with that rifle. Lights it up with a headshot. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Championship Sunday. Woo! Boys is doing the happy wiggle. Oh, it's my favorite day, baby. Sunday. Dude. Woo! Only Sunday during Cow Champs, obviously. Sunday's really sad. Most days, you got to go back to work Monday and all that. Absolutely. But not, not Championship right. Sunday, baby. Not Champ yes. Sunday. The duo back up in the yes. building. We're about to kill it, and we are going to have some fantastic matches. We Guaranteed. started the tournament. 32 of the world's top teams were down to the final three. And this tournament has been the craziest tournament in my seven years of commentating Call of Duty that I've ever been part of. Fact. Yeah. It's Fact. been a little bit insane, my friend. What has happened, man? Uh, upset after upset after upset. Yes. But the coolest part of this is it's just been a testament to where we're at in Call of Duty Esports right now. It's very so true. many great new players coming out of the woodwork, making names for themselves. No one expected Team Revenge to be here on Championship Sunday. Yeah. And no one could have expected that Optic Gaming, our number one team coming into this one, would have such a rough road. Same thing with teams like Epsilon and TCM from the UK. They didn't even make it to the bracket play. I know, I saw Swanee on my way out last night, and like, he, look, he's like, he couldn't, he was like, I might, I don't know what happened, might, we just, you know, that's my best accent of Swanee, but he was so, like, he, he still hasn't processed being knocked out. There are so many great matches still to come, though, and plenty to see today. We're gonna kick things off with our upper, upper bracket final. That is going to be Team Revenge versus Denial. Waiting for them, we will see the lower final as Phase Red is fighting for a spot in that championship match. We'll also take a look at the DLC 2 release, an exhibition match featuring some incredible gonna, athletes from the NFL and YouTubers, bucket. as well as that championship match and the Xbox sneak peek for everyone watching at home on Xbox Live. That's a good, that's a good healthy Sunday lineup, man. It's, it's going to be incredible, but Fwiz, we've said enough. Let's set it down to our friends on the Xbox stage. We got Benson and Rambo. Thanks, Bucket. Of course, starting off with the upper final, Ray. This game is going to be insane. We've got Denial going up against TR. What are your immediate thoughts? It's going to be an insane, insanely close match. Slaying-wise, both these teams look amazing. Teamwork-wise, both these teams look amazing. I think the biggest thing that's going to differ these teams here is really the fact that you didn't play today. Yesterday, the, right. both these teams are very kind of going, getting into it. Both these teams look hot, but whoever shows up on Championship Sunday is normally a team, obviously, that, that wins the tournament. But then again, it's like these teams have been, on paper, look really even. At Denial have like a little bit maybe a more slaying-related team. If we look at the KD papers, they have the say, top three slayers in the tournament. It's ridiculous. The, the top, if you look at all the players left in the tournament, so out of the three teams, in terms of KD, Denial have the top three. Yeah. They've been killing everything, Ray. Yeah, and Clay's all like way up there with 1.32. I mean, we have to talk MVP, about him a little bit. He's been MVP. here too. I think that's the biggest difference is all these players, well, Clay and Jacob more specifically, have been in the championship Sunday at Champs. They've been yep. there. They've been at the top. They've had chances to win. I, I think the experience is the main difference between these two teams. If we look on paper, we can't say anything. There's really not much to say here. Right. Both these teams look very clean, very strong. But as far as experience goes, and it's a big thing in this tournament like this, the pressure involved and really the prestige of winning champs and, and the winner's bracket final, Team Revenge first time here, it, it's going to be interesting. I think they really need to get off to a good the, start. The thing that surprised me most with TR is going to be their teamwork. They just look so good as a team, and it, it, it's interesting because it's experience, you know, versus a brand new team. So many storylines, and, you know, what these teams are playing for, it is huge, you know. You look at the prize pool real quick. First place, of course, four hundred thousand dollars. Second place, two hundred thousand dollars. Third place, one hundred twenty thousand dollars. So, a win in this guarantees you a minimum of two hundred thousand dollars. It's basically like an it's basically like an eighty thousand dollar match. Yeah, basically. it's ridiculous. Uh, that's going to be everything for myself and Ray, though. Back up to the guys on the main stage. We got a jam-packed house, and everyone is waiting for that upper bracket finals. For those of you at home, though, we want you to participate in the conversation. Stay cheering with us online yes. all day. Well, you look fresh, too, man. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just noticed you got a little gold gray gold. going, too. All right. Yo, Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. We look good in gold. Yo, yeah, thank you. Not going to lie. I agree. Uh, today, keep the hashtags flowing. As always, we've been trending worldwide. Hashtag COD champs, and of course, if you're doing it the right way, we are going to see you in the Twitter feed. Not only that, we got an MVP award. You heard the analyst desk talk yeah. a little bit about it. 
what is the hashtag there for the MVP? That's a good question. I think it's hashtag COD Champs MVP. Am I right? Yeah, you got it. Look right, at that. I'm right. good, man. And, and what I name are you hashtags. putting next to your hashtag? I'm going to put uh, attach next to it, man. Attach yeah, right team now. Team hashtag one of us is going with attach. I'm liking it. Yeah. Uh, attach, he's always Shout been the X Factor one of us. for denial, but he is playing absolutely incredible so far in this tournament. We have so many highlights from Saturday, though, and to catch you up on what you may have missed yesterday, let's take a look. Hey guys, it's day two with the 2015 Call of Duty Championship presented by Xbox, and what a crazy day it's going to be. We're here in bracket rounds, so we'll be reducing the field from 16 teams down to only three. Now tomorrow, we'll be ready to crown the official Call of Duty World Champion. But first, let's get a breakdown of today's action from Grand Boyd, Xbox Live's AC Bongos. Thanks, Justine. It's been a crazy day indeed, and the Manus all started on the main stage as Denial Esports shocked the world by upsetting championship favorite Optic Gaming in their round one the match. Places, got 30 kills. Can he get another oh, one? Yes, he can. Oh, 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 gonna fall. That's gonna be four one Denial were desperate for revenge after being swept 3 0 in the North America Regional Final, and behind strong play from Attach, Denial was able to easily take the series 3 1, pushing Optic into the loser's bracket. In round two, championship hopeful FaZe Red faced off against Team Revenge, and the trend of underdogs rising to the occasion continued. Despite flashes of brilliance from former champions Aix and Parasite, it was actually Revenge's coordinated team play that shone through and won the series for them 3-0. They have just taken down a juggernaut in the Call of Duty space. With Team Envious and Optic Nation also losing in the early rounds, we saw every single former world champion in the lower bracket. We have never actually seen this many upsets in the history of the Call of Duty Championship. So how did these top teams respond? Team Envious knocked out Optic Nation in their bottom bracket match, but lost in their next series, meaning that they too were going home empty-handed. Optic Gaming, however, rose to the challenge, first 3 0 below zero, and then winning 3-1 against Strictly Business. They looked primed to continue what was to be an incredible road back to the finals, but then they met a resurgent Phase Red squad. Back under the bright lights of the main stage, the Red Militia completely dismantled the green wall by coasting to a dominant 3-0 win. No. That could be eight for eight to be cleaned up. With 17 seconds left, it's impossible, and they know it. They have defeated Optic Gaming. That means that Nadeshaw and the Optic Gaming team would be going home without rings and looking to next year to secure their first Call of Duty Championship trophy. So who's still in the hunt this year? Denial Esports have been absolutely on Fire. They've cruised through the winner's bracket, taken down TK and AR, and when both Jcaps and Clayster are playing well, they seem unbeatable. They'll be joined tomorrow by Team Revenge, who plowed through the other half of the winner's bracket, as well as FaZe Red, who continued their fight through the loser's bracket. Thanks, Graham. With day two behind us, it means that we're only a few hours away from Championship Sunday. So, for those of you guys at home, tune in starting at 11 a.m. as we go from three teams to one world champion. Don't forget to watch the finals on Xbox One for an exclusive experience and a sneak peek at the making of Ascendance. We'll see you guys soon. We had such an incredible day yesterday, but today is just kicking off right now. And Fwiz, I got to get your thoughts before we jump into the Sunday matches. What was kind of the standout match from you on Saturday? Honestly, like, I know Denial's playing right now, but it was that Denial Optic game. And maybe that's a little cliche to say, since it was like how we kind of kicked the day off well, right. for the most part. Um, I knew it was going to be close, but if you looked historically, Optic had handled Denial in big matches previously, right? I mean, they went 3-0, and maybe it was 3-0, 3-1, both those in regionals and so forth. So I, I, I was surprised, and you know, they were clearly hyped up. Also, with that said, Denial and Optic, I thought could have been, you know, depending on if the bracket could have been like a finals-worthy match. So that that's when I feel like once that match happened, uh, everything after that started getting crazy because, like, it, the loser's bracket it had a lot of ramifications with the loser's bracket. Right. Because, like, four or five out of the top teams in the world were in the top part of the bracket. So then the loose, it just got crazy. So I felt like that was the domino effect for what ended up being a bizarre Saturday. I liked it. Well, at the end of the day, it was Team Revenge causing some yeah, chaos they're, in the they're, lower they're bracket, great. taking out Phase Red early. They will be playing on the main stage against this squad, though. Coming through the top half of the bracket, we got Denial Esports, and this Denial lineup 
really, it has been led by just pure slaying power. Attach, a huge factor. The 18-year-old going off in his first Call of Duty championship. Yeah, man, that, that dude plays crazy close quarter combat. Replay is very selfless player, objective player. You got to love him. If, I feel like every team needs somebody like him in order to succeed. J-Cap, you know, such a veteran for the team. Cool, calm, and collected. He's played on the big stage many times. And obviously, Clayster. I mean, my, my, it's like, I don't know. I would flip a coin for Clayster attached because Clayster was just going off yesterday. And he's that most, like, he gets you fired up. I would love, love playing with Clayster. And, and he had kinda, a great tweet. Did you see that? People kind of forget that J-Cap is right there with attached, tied at a 1.18 KD. The Slayers are doing their jobs, and their objective player replays is sitting at a .97. If you get someone just trading even while doing all the objective work, your team is winning. Did you did you see the Clay tweeted out, throw me to the Wolves, and I'll come back leading the pack. So he kind of like, yeah, that was the shout out to Optic and Envy. Kick it off, Bucket. This is your squad, man. Yo, Team Revenge. This is the Cinderella story of the tournament. Breakout tournament was at NA Regionals. Aqua, the top slayer on this squad throughout Regionals. But really, he's been working so well alongside Facetto. He's the shot caller. Basically, he plays the same role that Crim6 plays on Optic Gaming. But he is backed up by incredible, skilled, objective players. Remy sitting at a .93. But look for him to have up to 80 interactions in any hard point, always contesting those fights. And not offense surprisingly leading the squad he was mr clutch yesterday every time they needed him to go big he was getting 1v3s 1v4s totally locking down entire parts of the map by himself to help his team score what's your favorite thing about this team teamwork yeah and no egos these guys are just a group of fellows who have been working together for years they've come together on different teams coming back for the championship and I really love just the chemistry here. They're getting it done as a squad. There's no individual performance. There's no greed. It's all about the win. That's all they care about. Yeah, none. and they're going to need to keep that momentum and, and mindset going into today for sure. And of course, it's all about the trophy. Ooh. One team will walk away as the 2015 Call of Duty champion. Who will it be? Phase Red. Denial and Team Revenge, our final three here on Championship Sunday. Only one, though, will be crowned champion, and one player of the 12 will walk away with the MVP award. Yeah, that's cool. And again, I, I you know, we'll see how today pans out. I mean, it's pretty, you, you can't prematurely call it, right? I mean, it, today is probably the biggest weight in how that gets determined, that MVP award. Absolutely. I mean, I look at all the other teams that have been eliminated. They've had some stellar performances, but you need to go big enough to get your squad in the top three, in my opinion, to earn the MVP. And of course, Money. not only are they playing for the trophies, there are a million dollars on the line this weekend. Jeez. And of course, everyone fighting for the biggest chunk of first place prize pool of $400,000. That's some cheese, son. 100,000 100, 100, in a weekend Woo. per player. Yes. I can't, you can't complain. Can't complain. Biggest uh, prize pool for a Call of Duty event. So here's a look at our bracket. You can see Denial and Revenge, which is coming up next. Whoever gets knocked out here will go up against Phase Red. And that'll also be a great match because Revenge 3 0 Phase Red to knock him out, right? I mean, to put him in losers, isn't that correct? Is it, wasn't it Revenge that put, knocked him down there? Revenge, uh, Revenge, yeah, Knocked definitely. Phase Red and the th Phase Red, the hands. Yeah, the 3 0. Yeah, it, it, it was, was brutal, it was right? Pretty yeah. awesome to watch. Yeah. So we'll see how that all pans out, but. Denial and Revenge in the upper bracket finals. I, I think if we made the uh, the bracket, not many people would have had this matchup. Yeah, this is yeah, basically yeah. like Gonzaga being yeah. in the yeah, finals yeah, of the March good, Madness yeah, bracket. Wait, very, appro very appropriate parallel response there. Yeah, go ahead. We're going to take a look at some of the top players going into this matchup. You can see Naga Fen, he leads the team with a 1.17 KD overall, but really it's the clutch plays that he has had throughout this tournament. When it comes to slaying at the NA Regionals, he put up almost 30 kills per respawn game, and I think he is going to be a key factor to start things off with the hard point. And he's been clutch for his team. Look at that. that led the team in slaying at Regionals. 29.10 kills per 10 minutes. It takes me an hour to do that. <laughs> He's got a lot of talent backing him up, though. And as we kind of said earlier, there's no just one key player on this revenge squad. That is the best part of this team. It's the teamwork, the communication, the chemistry. On the other side, though, they're definitely going to have their hands full with this slang from Denial. If you watch the Optic Gaming Denial matchup, it was purely highlight after highlight after highlight as both teams were trading three pieces. But the man who's been the most consistent, I think I only saw Clay go negative in one game this yeah, entire I believe, tournament. I, I believe it, man. 
Clay is, a, is an absolute monster. I've always loved watching him play just because he's such a hype man. Plus, he's really talented. He can do some crazy streaks. He's got good teamwork and communication. It's always fun to listen in whatever team Clayster's on when the team is like firing on all cylinders. Uh, so he'll be a big he'll be, be a big part of this team. And again, I always like the idea of having JCap and Clayster together on a team. And I think that's been really good for Attach, who's a young player that's like in a big moment. I mean, this is without a doubt his biggest moment here, playing today on Sunday a Call of Duty Championship. And I'm thinking an 18 year old version of me would really like to have somebody like JCap and Clayster on there. And there you go, the key player matchup. There's Attach himself against Aqua who can be a sneaky little beaver, right, Puckett? Dude, that's, your, that's, your, that's, your, that's your thing, man. That's my your jam. sneaky beaver of the yep. day is definitely Aqua. Yep. <laughs> he has, uh, he's been incredible. I love his patience. He will lay prone around a corner, let two players walk by. He knows where they're spawning, lets them walk by, shoots them in the back, calls it out to his team, goes for the objective. Here in hard point, though, I need him to keep pace with attach because these are going to be the guys just slamming each other in the face with those ASM ones, getting the ASM. He looks nervous. He looks nervous. Kills. He looks nervous right Attach or, yeah, or a nervous. Aqua? Nervous, right? Uh, Attach does. He looks nervous for sure. That's all right, though. We'll see. Once the match gets going, 72% in favor are using hashtag denial. The revenge fans need to come out of the woodworks here, help them out. But I'm done talking, you're done talking. Let's kick it off. Game number one is going to be retreat, hard point. Puckett, what do we got going on here? Man, there is so much history in this matchup. They played retreat, hard point twice at the North American Regionals. We saw both teams take one of them. First, it was the team revenge squad beating denial in the final seconds. Then later in the tournament, it was JCap leading the squad for the game one win in the first best of five. But what's crazy for me is so far in this tournament, Denial is outscoring their opponents by an average of 95 points in hard point so far. That's nuts. All right, well, let's see if Denial can keep that up going into Sunday as Place is going to draw the first kill. JCap picking one up, but Aqua going to knock him off. And neither team able to get a hard point there for the first couple of seconds as finally Denial gets in only for a brief second as it's going to be Revenge that's sitting in and out. Attach sitting at 0-1, off to a slow start, but he is going to be rotating already, trying to get his teammates the good spawns as they will put some pressure. I like that Clay is going to be contesting the hill. That was a big two-piece to stop a little bit of time from Revenge, but already you got Nagafen. He was the leader of the squad yesterday, leading them once again at 3-2 and two to open things up. We're going to see Attach inside the hard point, and Nagafen is going to be able to clean him up finally here with the Ameli. Nagafen still laying it down, finally gets taken out. 15 to 12, you got six seconds left in the hard point. The team's starting to rotate out here. Attach gonna pick up the kills. We jump back on with Nagafen, see what he's able to do. Shots being fired, picks up another kill. As he's kind of got something going for him. Five and four. And it's gonna be Revenge that takes yet the hard point again. But they're gonna try to take the lead here, and they do pull it out. So continue to hold it down, taking the lead over Denial. And this is a great start for this squad. This is the most Ameli play I have seen so far in Advanced Warfare as well. Of course, the LMG is getting a little bit of a buff recently with the last title update. You move faster with it, and that has allowed these pro players to bring it into all of these situations where they need to be mobile, strong, laying down tons of fire, 100 bullets per clip, and Nagafen is making every Every one count. Well, you could just hold it down in the hard point. You don't have to worry about reloading. So you can just have, you can kind of like just hard, hard trigger it, and you're good to go. So on board with replays, he's going to get some quality time in that hard point as he's thrown out here. Shots being fired, picks up one kill. Clayster drops two. So this is exactly what Denial needed. They needed to get the rest of this time in the hill. It's very critical. Nagafed just dropping two players for Denial, as well as holding down that hard point. And really, he was the X factor in this particular hard point. Absolutely, he is playing incredible, and it's been all with the LMG. Out of stuns, out of overclock, pretty slow moving across that pool. He'll be cut down from behind. But Aqua and Remy rotated early, and you know, we talked about Remy a little bit. You're not looking for him to put up huge numbers or go massively positive. You just want him to stay active. Right now, five and nine, but already five captures. He's the guy who's gonna be constantly charging the hill. Aqua sees all three of his teammates fall, though. He's gotta make some big plays, and it's JCap causing problems from inside the hard point. JCap holding it down. He's the only player in it for denial. 26 seconds left. Puckett, he doesn't even see anybody. His team's trying to slay there, finally. He does spot somebody. Attach is going to hold it down. He does have Clayster in the hard point with him. 17 seconds left. They need to milk this for every single point that they possibly can. And Denial going to take. Oh, go no. to scoreboard, man. Oh, we close. all tied up. Close. All tied up as it stays contested. Denial able to get it back there for the last couple of seconds. Replays going to stay in the hard point as the rest of the team tries to get the rotation. So 67 to 60 with six minutes and 55 seconds left on the clock. 
And Attach is going to be rotating low, but it's Team Revenge already in the hard point. Guess who it was? Remy there first. Attach, nice stun. Tricks his opponent, comes from behind, but he is going to get taken down. Fantastic kill coming in from Nagafen, who is just continuing to impress me time and time again on this main stage. You know, coming into the event, everyone was calling Revenge Online Warriors. They are proving here they can hang with the best teams in slang, but it's Denial starting to pick up a little bit of momentum after that third hard point coming into the bar. And J-Cap able to pick up some kills here, at least get some assists on the board. You've got replays in the hard point holding it down. J-Cap trying to protect him. Replays now has to try to get some of these kills here. It's going to be really important not able to do it as Revenge is going to take over the hard point, but Attach is not letting that happen as he picks up two, kills three. Attach is on fire here. Yeah, nice little three-piece action here from the youngster, and he is going to stay here to milk the final three seconds. It's going to be a nice 40-point advantage for Denial at this position in the game. We're going to stay on board with Attach, though. Of course, it's going to be TR up first. How does Denial plan to take over the top attic? Because this is where Revenge should have an opportunity to catch up on the scoreboard. Remy just handing out their revenge, getting some serious points, like you said, Puckett. And this, they have to hold it down as hard point. You, neither one of these teams want to let the other one get too far out of it. At this level of play, you've got to keep it close. You don't want to let it come down in the last couple of minutes. Attached, now in the hard point for Denial. And he's going to just hold it down as his team's going to try to slay. Clayster does pick up a kill. He was able to take out Remy as well. So that's one down for revenge. And look at Clay, man. Yeah, 28 and 11. And again, he's... He's got to do it for a squad. They depend on him so heavily. You can see it right there. He is ready and determined. But Dude. even, you can just tell, like, he, he is thriving on today. Back in Black Ops 2, Glacer was the foul god here in Advanced Warfare. I think he's the foul god. His AR has just young been on god. point. A 1.32 coming into this match. He's sitting on top of over a 2.0 so far in this first game in the best and of five. And they said he's got the highest KD of all the remaining players in the tournament left. So clearly, he's, you know, from a just raw Slayer perspective, he's the number one guy to watch here. Clayser hanging out here, 134 to 90, four minutes and 36 seconds left on the clock, trying to get some shots down range, able to connect, but not pick up the kill. Finally does clean up one there. That's going to be Aqua as they are trying desperately to get this hard point over, and they do. So Denial takes it over, replays, holding it down, and Denial has a really good setup here to try to defend this hard point. I mean, replays only has 14 kills, but I feel like every time I look down on the kill feed, he's getting two pieces. So yeah, he's, he's doing getting his those job. big double kills that allows them to break into the hard point. But here's a great push coming in from Revenge. It was Nagafen and Aqua applying the pressure. Facento in the mix as well. Aqua looping behind players. Oh he gosh. is so sneaky. And when he's shooting you in the back, you have no time to turn around. He's not going to miss a single bullet. Continuing to rotate. He's just picking off Denial from the side. And I love this play style. You have three guys for Revenge. Looking hit, hit at Aqua, you from the bro. front, Aqua hitting oh you from God. the back. That, yeah, that he's playing insane. He's got six consecutive kills all in a very short amount of time. Now holding down the hard point. And if he can go off in this hard point, try to get back the lead for revenge, that'll be massive for him as he's able to get one more, finally does get taken out, and it's going to be attached holding down the hard point. J-Cap has been pretty quiet this game, to be honest. I'm looking for him to step it up, but if you're denial, you got to be feeling okay. You're up by 30. That lead is continuing to grow, and it's really all a testament to what Clayster is doing in this game. Coming off the respawn, we'll switch back to him as Replace is taken down at pool wall. Revenge in there for a moment. J-Cap trying to apply some pressure from the court side, but it's not going to work. Back over to Revenge as Aqua has things locked down. Ten more points remain on this hard point. They're going to bring it within ten. Yeah, Aqua's starting to get real dirty now as he's trying to pick up a kill right there. Does get hit. Marker's not able to clean it up. Shots being fired all over the place, and they are playing back and forth. Neither one able to get a kill. He even had a nervous little melee smash. I do that all the time. Pacentos were on board with him. You can see, like, Revenge trying to just get in this as best as possible, starting to work together as one unit, and they're going to try to break this hard point here. They do move in, two players move in, but both of them taken out. However, it is Revenge that's got control of this hard point, but they've got a lot of Denial players as Denial slips in, replays, holding it down. And, and Fwiz, what is the goal here for Revenge right now? I mean, listen, they, they, with two minutes and 20 seconds left, you can't even let this, this margin get any higher for Denial. So they've got to they've decrease the gap a little bit. This hard point and the next one are, are going to be pivotal, pivotal for the game. And you see, it is nothing but Denial in the kill feed until Nagafen got that single kill attached. Going to punish, though, over on poolside. That was Pacento taken down. 
Up to about a 40 point advantage is Denial, and Attach is making sure it stays oh that way as gosh. he comes in and just cleans house. JCap also in the kill feed, picking up his 21st kill, but most importantly, Clayster is not slowing down. 41 23, just below that 2.0. He has been dominant so far in this the young game. god and the old god collaborating on one team. What is Clay, like 22, 23? He's one of the I, oldest guys in the game. He might as well be <laughs> 60 years old in Call of Duty age, man. He's, he's, like, he's like a Yoda of Call of Duty. And then you've got a young Jedi in attach. Do you like those Star Wars references? I know you love your Star yeah, I Wars. I do, man. Aqua had to use it. trying to push in. It's going to come down to this. About 80 seconds left in this game. 36 points separating the two squads. Remy can't get the intro kill. It's Attach oh holding it down God. at short range. Nagafen pulling out the IMR, but Attach lighting things up. Picks up two, staying alive, poking out at the perfect time. Finally, Facento takes him down, but by the time they get there, it is Glacer already locking it up. Glacer's definitely going to hit the 50 bomb before we run out of time. No, there was so much slaying that just went down there in a concentrated 20-second period. That, that feed was going so fast. It looked like a chat. Clay coming off the respawn. TR inside first, and look at the route Clayster is going to take. They're going to patiently give up this about massive, 15 dude. points here and then fight for the rotation. If they take out Facento, they've got the window clear. This is it. I mean, and it's, Clay yeah. is going to fall. JCap up top, 30 seconds. Got to hold quiz. it down, dude. They've got to hold this. Like, yeah, that, that's it. That two feet yep. from JCap yep. just locks that's it. it up. That's it. This is wow. the final game. They've played retreat three times, coming in each team. Denial. One, denial proving they're the better squad at hardpoint this weekend. Holy, that was one of the most fun hardpoint games to watch. Just all the slang that went down there. I mean, there's been some close one. Clayster's got to go for that 50 bomb. Can he get it? Just like for, just yeah, entertain me. Uh, he's got to get the 50 bomb. Really, all we're talking about is can Clay get the 50 bomb? Oh my gosh, Clay, don't choke it. Don't. She's like, give me a kill. Give me a kill. Where is Jake one? Cap, quick oh no, that's mine. One more. Can that's one mine. More. We'll take it. 49 plus a team kill. That's a 50 in my book. He is so amped up. That team, I'm telling you, we talk, I talk about momentum a lot. I really do. It, it, like, morale and momentum are so big in Call of Duty. Like, getting fired up and letting Denial win a game one hard point is scary. Like, I don't know how you slow these guys down. I, it's going to be really tough for revenge. I'm telling you, that, that, that will dictate the game. Well, on average, Denial has outscored their opponent by 90 five points so far in hard point. This is the closest any team has been to them, but I want to send it down to our friends on the Xbox stage. Guys, what do you think about the action there in game number one? That was absolutely insane, game one. That was great. Denial coming out, all guns blazing. You know, you look at Clayster doing exactly what he needs to do. Unbelievable amount of kills, but, you know, break down that game for us. All the slaying was really what made the difference. TR actually won all the rotations on the first side. Yes. Obviously beside the first hard point, but they won two, three, and four, and five, but they just couldn't hold it. Every time we just saw Clayster attached coming in, getting two, three kills, slaying it up. It doesn't matter if you rotate early, if you can't get the first kills to actually get that first 15, 20 right. seconds. I mean, like, that means that Clayster and Denial were getting all the scrap time, and then they were getting the first time because they were killing on that rotation. So that, that ended up being a 40 point lead at the half. Clay was 29 and 12, attached was 20, 13. Those two players did exactly what they needed to do. And to be fair, Replays in the cap also played really well in the first half. They kind of had did. a little bit of let go on, on the second half, but it really didn't matter. Attaching Clay were just going off. Yeah, what, what, when a player drops 40 kills with two and a half minutes left in the game. Yeah, you're kind of like, okay, you, well. The, the fact that that game team. was actually as close as that is, is impressive for TR right. in, in, in some sense, because, you know, going into that game, uh, Denial had, what, a five and one hard point record as opposed to TR's three and three. So exactly. that really makes the, the rest of the series a little bit interesting. Right, and, it, and that kind of puts a point in TR's perspective, like, is that really going to matter to the series? They, they kind of, they lost, they lost 50% of their hard points so far. So right. they've been, they're five and zero in uplink, they're four and one CTF, six and one in search. I mean, those are really scary stats to go up against. So, I mean, I, if anything, Denial really needed to win that first map to give himself a good it's chance in the lead. The S and D though is going to be extremely interesting because as you just said, you know, TR six and one in search and story throughout the Call of Duty World Championship. Denial five and one. Yeah. So the, the Goliaths of search. It, it search really is. It, this next search and story is going to be absolutely insane. I, I honestly can't wait. Uh, back up to the desk with Pocket and Poison. All right, thank you guys. Very good points there. Now, coming into the Search and Destroy quiz, who do you think is going to have the stronger S&D game? I'm going to go purely with Denial. I think Ray and uh, Benson made a good point. I'm only going with Denial straight from a pure momentum standpoint. I also want to know, it looked like Clayster was about to have a heart attack after that game. Did you see? He was like, <sighs> like afterwards. So I, I'm going with Denial on this. I, I actually think Denial is going to 3-0 it. 
I think one of the most exciting games we saw yesterday was FaZe Red versus this TR squad. It went all the way to round 11. Honestly, I'm hoping we see something similar. The map's going to be Biolab, and Revenge actually has some stellar sniper. You want play. that game five, round 11, don't you, Puckett? Dude.